Health Watch. Officials are warning about a rare but serious condition affecting kids around the country. Cases of acute flaccid myelitis, or AFM, have now spread to 22 states. 62 cases are confirmed, and 90% of them involve children. The symptoms often include severe muscle weakness or paralysis. So Dr. David Dupree joins me now for more insight into this rare disease. So we've been doing stories on this bit by bit. I don't think anyone's had ever even heard of this story before these cases started popping up. Uh, give us the basics, you know, what, how, give us the symptoms of this disease. What does it look like? Well, I think we can take a deep breath. Yeah. It's rare. CDC says it's one in a million chance your child's going to be affected, right? So it's not new. It's gained traction since 2014 because the number of cases keeps going up and up and up and up and up. Right. And again, the symptoms are concerning because we have children, right? I have young kids. Yeah, me too. And the symptoms usually come on. This is flu season, right? Or a respiratory season. It starts out as a respiratory illness like any other thing. So then what happens, we have to understand now what I do differently now is if mm -hmm. my kid has a respiratory illness, it's on my radar now. Like now I have to look out for symptoms because these symptoms of acute flaccid myelitis occur about one to two weeks after a respiratory illness. Okay. So you have to look for signs of weakness in your child. You know, you have to look for signs of difficulty swallowing, eye drooping, things that you would not normally have to put on your radar have to be on your radar. Why are the numbers increasing? No, nobody knows. Okay. Here, here's, here's what we know. Prevention is always key, no matter what the disease mm -hmm. is, right? So what we have to focus on is how do we prevent something that we can't treat? Because that's the ultimate question, right. and that's the scare, right? Like we all have kids, like I said. So prevention's key. You gotta wash your hands with soap and water, right? You it's always it, back to you, basics, isn't back it? Back to basics, yeah. keep it clean, right? right? So you have to wash your hands. You have to decontaminate your desk with disinfectant, De decontaminate the phone, not shake hands, and stay out of close contact with people. This is spread from an enterovirus, this is what we think. Mm -hmm. It's an enterovirus, which is a polio-like virus okay. that's spread from respiratory droplets, right? So close contact, someone's coughing, sneezing, you want to make sure that you are not in close contact with those right. people. So I would, I would have a no handshake rule because this usually comes late August and into the fall. Mm. Um, you know, the fact that it's kids that are falling victim to this, this has to complicate things a little bit in terms of just figuring out where the virus is moving, how it's moving, because they can't talk, they can't express how they're feeling. Children cannot articulate yeah. and say, Daddy, I'm having trouble swallowing. Right. Daddy, my right leg is numb. Like, they don't have the ability to do that. So that's why the onus is sort of on the parents, as we take care of our kids all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. But now we have another layer of things we have to look out for. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I want to talk about something else. Um, in L.A., they've got an outbreak of typhus. These are the sort of diseases that we're hearing more and more that I consider, you know, something you might see in the developing country or something that you read about in a history book. It doesn't exist here anymore. Typhus? And it comes from the most simplest of things, right? It comes from flea feces. Like... How do we treat this, right? Yeah. There's really not only other than supportive treatment and some antibiotics, but what we have to do is you gotta prevent it, right? How do we prevent that? You gotta disinfect your dog, you gotta disinfect your yard. You also have to do some even home remedies, yeah. right? You don't have the, put the garbage can on top of the garbage, don't have huge open vats of water, mm. and also just simple things. Like, it, it's known that fleas, these little blood suckers, these little Draculas, they can go 100 days without a blood meal. So they can live a long time. They right. can also jump a hundred times their body length. That'd be like me jumping 500 feet. Right. So what we have to do is, is prevention is key. So some home remedies, you can take some citrus water and spray some citrus water around the house. It's harmless. Squirt some lemon into some water right. and it's spray not, it around the house. It's not toxic in any it's way. It's not toxic in any way. Vacuum up the dusted areas and you can even put dry salt. Salt dries out the fleas and also clothes, wash your clothes. They, fleas cannot stand a wash and a dry cycle. Dr. David Dupree, some really easy things that you can do to help prevent the spread of typhus. Thank you very much. Thank you.